What is going on people? Now today I have new equipment that I have just acquired to make sure that I keep improving the quality of my voice. Now please don't skip this. Make sure you tell me in the comment section below how my voice is now. Tell me that it has improved so that I can keep providing you best quality. Now one of the reasons why I have acquired these equipments is because there is something that is cooking. I will be launching this in the next one or two weeks. So make sure you don't miss this launch because the moment we launch, it will be flying. So how you do that and how you ensure that you don't miss it, make sure you have subscribed to my YouTube channel and then turn on those notifications. That way, anything that I post, you are going to get a notification for that. All right. So today, uh, I want us to discuss errors uh, uh, and how we report errors in ERP Next and our Frappe framework. Now. We can sometimes get very comfortable when we are in the development mode uh, by basically just logging errors in the in the in the in the in the terminal. So when you have that bench start uh, thread running there, anything that goes wrong in your application is normally printed there, right? And sometimes even you can just go ahead and print stuff that you want to see. Maybe you want to see what is the output of one, two, three. So you can go ahead and print that on the terminal. But assume that you have written an API, this API is in production, and this API is being called by another application. Therefore, you don't have that, you don't have that fancy bench start log going on there, so you can't tell what went wrong. And then somebody tries to call your endpoint, it doesn't work, it doesn't give them feedback, and you as the developer don't even know what went wrong. Because if you actually don't capture these errors, you will not be knowing what is going to be. You, you will not know what went wrong and what why your application is not working. So you are going to be in a lot of darkness at that moment. So in ERP Next, there is a way to capture those errors, and that is what I want to show you today. Let's get right into work. So this is my instance, the one that we are going to be using just for this uh, demo. So uh, we are going to just be creating one doc type, uh, a test doc type with just three fields. And then uh, we are going to try and create um, uh, or rather insert a document or rather a record into that document using an API so that you can be able to capture those errors. So I'm going to go here into doc types. So go doc type please. And then here I'm just going to go ahead and create one doc type. I can call this something like what? Like um, testing errors. Maybe something like that. Maybe testing error or something. Then I'm going to put this in my in my uh, custom app. We don't need to check anything else here. Must not must not be very specific. And then here we can say we have something like full name, and then uh, we are going to get age. And the last thing we may need here is my email address. And uh, we can use the email as the as the as the naming series for this. And then we can go ahead and actually break this also so that uh, let's have that there. And then this break is going to come here and it's going to be basically a column break. Okay. All right. That's it. So we have now our doc type. We can quickly rush into the doc type. I'm rushing here basically because uh, today we want to report errors. So this is uh, just, uh, uh, we are just quickly creating this doc type. So we have something to start working with. So this is how my doc type looks. Has nothing now. And you notice that these things are not mandatory. I need them to be mandatory so that we can um, we can deliberately introduce errors when we are trying to save them. And then we can see how we are going to be capturing them into uh, ERP next. So now uh, my three fields are mandatory. Perfect. All right. So the next thing then is just to write code. And uh, let me just make this larger so that you don't have to strain looking at what I'm doing here. I'm going to have one function that I'm going to call something like um, testing errors. You can change this depending on how you want to do this. I want this to receive keyword arguments. And then this um, is supposed to be whitelisted. So frappe.whitelist. And this is also going to need to allow a guest. And this is supposed to be set up to true. So frappe.whitelist allow guest true. And then this is going to receive keyword arguments. Now, from here, the next thing that I need to do, I need to send this thing from Postman right here, okay? So, when I'm here, I want to uh, provide three things uh, here. 
So the first thing is going to be the full name. The full name, and then full name is basically going to be keyword arguments. Remember, we pass this as keyword arguments, so I can just say keyword arguments dot get. And then this get is going to get what? It's going to get what I passed from Postman. So I can basically pass the same thing. Then I may need to copy this three times. And this time I'm going to grab age. And then in the last one, I am going to just get email. All right. So now the advantage of using keyword arguments over basically just putting here something like, like full underscore name and then email and then uh, something like what? Like uh, age. Now, when we do this, it will work, yes. But when we go to Postman, we will need to provide this in the same exact order. And that is why I normally like using keyword arguments because I don't have to worry in Postman or when I'm passing the payload, I don't need to worry about how the order was. The moment I have this one here, they are going to use the keywords to get the variable that I want to get at a specific time. The next thing you are going to do now is just to go ahead and insert this thing into our document. And therefore, we are just going to do a doc. So this is basically Frappe's uh, document API. So this is going to be Frappe uh, uh, dot get doc. And then this takes in a number of things. The first thing that we are going to need to take here is the name of, uh, not the name, sorry, but uh, doc type. That is the keyword. And then the doc type that we need, of course, is the name of our doc type. So we can go back here and grab the name of our doc type which is this one testing error this is the doc type we created paste it here no and then the other things that we need here are basically the names of the fields that we have so the first one is full name and this full name is represented by this full name here we have uh age i think i can type age faster than i can copy it and then we have last year we have an email and email here so we have email agent and that after that the next thing we are going to do here is just to insert it so we can just go ahead and say doc dot insert and remember we are going to be calling this from postman so we may need to ignore permissions here so that it is allowed to insert so we can go ahead and provide uh ignore permissions and then pass this is true so ignore permissions true and just to avoid trouble db dot commit. Just I just don't want to try and save it and then doesn't save. So that's why I provided this here. Now, why don't we head back to Postman and try to send data now? So we can go here and do this is too small, right? Let me see whether I can make it a little bit larger for you. Um yeah, I can make it like that. The first thing we need here is the full underscore name. And the full name we can provide my name here as Geoffrey underscore Karani. And then not Geoffrey underscore Karani, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, space Karani. And then we are going to do this one, we will need to do a comma here, we will need to do an email. Now you see here, I don't have to worry what came up before what. I just provide my thing and Python is just going to get it them as key with using the keyword arguments and provide me the information that I need. My email here is Karani at seopersoft.com and then the last thing that i need here is age and the age i'm going to use 15. of course i'm not 15 this is just for test purposes now when i go ahead and um, let me reduce the font here a little bit when i go ahead and click on send invalid because we don't have the url here of course now the first thing that we need there as the url is this one so i can just copy this uh, base url and put it here all right then after that, the next thing that we are going to be needing here is API. And you can see, of course, I have some recommendations here, so I can just pick one of these. But then my I don't think that's the name of my function. My function is called testing error, so I can just copy that and put it here. If you don't know how I provide this, you can just pause the video and just see what I have done there. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to send that. This doesn't show me anything. So it, it shows like it created and the reason why I have this is because I didn't have any return. And you can see here, we have created that record, Geoffrey Karandi, age 15, and this is the email address. The reason why the email address has come up here is because when we are creating the document, I used the email address as the naming series. So it has been used as a primary key there. All right. So now, what about when we introduce an error? Like now, for instance, if I try to send this document again, 
let me just allow me to just reduce this font one more time if i try to send this document again you can see now i have a very huge error here a lot of stuff going on and the of course we can see here that there is something like already exists so there's a duplicate and that is because the email address like i told you is what is being used as the primary key so you can have two email addresses that are similar now you are seeing this because we are calling this from postman what if you are calling this thing from another application so maybe a react application has made a request to your application to create this user or basically this whatever it is i don't know whether it's a user or what this is so uh now the, the the you are not going to get a proper response and of course uh, uh, because you have not captured any errors anywhere because you are not going to have this log and there is no you are also not going to have this log that is running here because you can also see here we are also getting the same thing let me just make it a little bit larger you can see here we have integrity constraint violation and then here we have this is a duplicate now this again is not going to be here because your application will be maybe if it's if Rapper you up next is going to pro possibly be ran by supervisor so you will not have this now you need to capture that error and how do we do that in here up next we have a document called error logs let me just make sure i write this properly and you can see currently we don't have any error although we have errors coming in and let's just go ahead and send that again there is an error and we don't have any error here so we are in total darkness we don't know what's going on now how do we capture these errors in ERP next it's very easy and by the way it's in frappe we just introduce this into we just uh, 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 send this inside a, a trend except block so we try that if it fails then we throw an exception so except and then this is going to get in into an exception that you can call e or you can call it a um, as a right and then here we can now save this thing into our into our 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 error logs document how do we do that frappe.log error this is how we do it frappe.log error so this is a function that you are calling and this function is going to take in another 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 uh, statement here which is frappe uh, frappe dot get trace back so trace back and then this trace back is also a, a function of course you can see we are invoking that function and then we are not doing anything after we invoke this function i mean it doesn't take any any uh any any parameters here this, so that's a function that doesn't take any parameters but then at the end here after we have done frappe dot get trace back we need to low to put this uh, e the e that was an exemption here we need to convert it into a string or rather we need to stringify it and save it here so how do we do that of course in python first of all of course we have this and then our e because uh, we, are, we want to log it but then remember this is supposed to be converted into a formatted string so we need to do that this is python 3.6 you know and then we save it and we are done now can we go back to postman and try to send the same request again now here we see a better error it's telling us that there is a message that is testing uh, that testing error that currently whatever already exists you can see that and you can see it is even trying to provide bolds so if you re return this is even going to be a very nice reformatted string there and then we have a title of duplicate name and then the indicator is red meaning it is uh, it is red because it's an error the title of the duplicate name and the error body is uh, 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 karani uh, at pearsoft.com already exists and now remember we are also not going to be seeing this so we need to see this error within here up next so that we can know what exactly happened go back here we, you can try and reload here and you can see we have an error that was logged now if you open it it has everything that happened so you can see here it is telling you exactly what happened that's how we log errors now how about we just remove this email address so that now we have another error that email address is required send it what happens the error changes to validation error and it tells you that this is error required what about in here up next now go back here and reload it and here we have another unseen error and you, when you open it it tells you that email is required and it, it even tells you which line so it's telling us it is in sas uh, services rest.py line 20 so that is where it is trying to insert and you can see here this is where it is failing so you will know 
that the email address that you are trying to get here is required and you are not providing it inside your payload. Now, when these errors become too many, uh, one more thing actually that I want to show you. You see this one is saying seen. If I try to send it again, this is just a way of tracking which errors you have not already seen. And then I reload. You can see here, this says unseen, no, or rather not seen, because I have not opened it. So this helps you to track which errors you have not already opened. And now uh, you are able to debug your system easily. Now, the other thing and the last thing, when these errors become too many, you can easily drop them by going to these three dots up here and then seeing clear error logs and these are gone. So basically that is how we capture errors in Europe next and uh, we uh, print them, making uh, our applications very easy to debug even in production. That is where we end today's video. Just before you go, let me take this opportunity to remind you that we have created a product called Elim Elimo Pro. It is riding on ERP Next infrastructure. Now, this is a, an education management system. Basically, it's an, uh, a, like a higher education management system where we have customized it, integrated it with, it with a number of banks, integrated a number of payment gateways, and made it very easy even for students to do applications online. So we are processing all that information from student registration all the way to uh, uh, payment of fees and everything like that. And if you want to know more about that, if you're interested, just ping us. Uh, I, have, I will leave the website to that product in the description section below. Reach us if you are interested in anything like uh, uh, an education management system where you want to uh, customize your workflows and all that. We already have done that, so it's just going to be an easy conversation. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next video. And don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, so that you don't miss the content that I will be releasing in the next one or two weeks. Cheers, and see you.